Welcome back to Tipton Bros. Today, we'll be discussing the German Blomenvoss BV-40 Fighter Glider. Design, development, service history, and specifications will be provided. Before we begin, I must disclose that I am no expert and never claim to be. Now, let's get into it. Spring 1944. Germany has been left reeling, as the collective allied noose tightened around the throat of the Third Reich. Spread thin on all fronts, the Wehrmacht could do little to slow the Soviet onslaught in the east. Stalin's unceasing Red Army pummeling the battle-fatigued German forces towards Berlin. Simultaneously, vital infrastructure such as oil installations and factories which contributed greatly to the Nazi war effort were reduced to rubble by Allied strategic bombing. With the production and industrial capacity of the Third Reich systematically crippled, the overextended Luftwaffe was merely delaying the inevitable, and would need nothing short of a miracle to shift the tides of war. Jet and rocket-powered interceptor aircraft like the Messerschmitt ME-262 and ME-163 were effective, but cost-prohibitive. Starved of material, Germany desperately sought out a cheaper solution, which could yield the same results. In steps, Dr. Richard Vaught, aeronautical engineer, veteran of the First World War, and chief designer at Blomenvoss. Vaught envisioned a weapon that required no power plant, was constructed of primarily wood, and could be assembled by unskilled labor an inexpensive interceptor, capable of halting the Allied torrent of bombers dead in their tracks. This was the BV-40. Centered around an armored, single-seat cockpit, the pilot laid flat on his stomach, in the prone position, upon a padded bench, even being provided a chin rest. Such an unconventional arrangement allowed for a substantial reduction in fuselage size, totaling only 2.3 feet in width. The cockpit itself was fabricated out of sheet metal and protected with a 20mm thick steel plate in the nose and 8mm plates on the side. The windshield was also reinforced, boasting 4.7 inches of armored glass. Moving rearward, the wing main planes were high-mounted to deliver adequate lift when towed, while the tail employed a single vertical stabilizer and a forward-set mid-mounted horizontal stabilizer. Takeoff was achieved using a temporary twin-wheel trolley which was jettisoned once the glider had become airborne. Given that the pilot returns in one piece, the BV-40 landed by way of a belly skid. In a perfect scenario, the impromptu interceptor would be linked to a Messerschmitt BF-109 via a tow cable and dragged to an operational altitude of around 6 kilometers or 20,000 feet, hopefully above the intended target. Now positioned over an unsuspecting bomber formation, the BV-40 would descend at an attack angle of roughly 20 degrees. Equipped with two Rheinmetall Borsich MK-108 30mm autocannons in each wing route, the glider would in theory decimate the Allied aircraft. The pilot was guaranteed one pass, but may well attempt two, if circumstances permitted, before a safe altitude could no longer be maintained due to loss of lift. Each cannon, while potent, only possessed 35 rounds, diminishing the window of opportunity considerably. If all went to plan, the BV-40 would return to the nearest airbase. This imagined hypothetical scenario on the part of Vought is not only wishful thinking, but delusional. A Hail Mary destined for failure. Seven examples would be finished in total, with the first glider completed in early 1944. Initial testing was unsuccessful, as Prototype 1 was unable to get off the runway. A subsequent assessment on May 6th proved more fruitful. Towed by a Messerschmitt ME-110, the blunt-nosed BV-40 took to the skies over Wenzendorf Air Base. Modifications to the discardable trolley followed, but unfortunately, the first prototype would be lost during a crash landing on June 2nd of that same year. Glider 4 would suffer an identical fate, and subsequent aircraft would deliver mediocre results across the board, to the dismay of RLM officials. Design changes were briefly discussed, but the plug was pulled by mid-August of 1944, and the Blomenvoss BV-40 went up in smoke. The platform was deemed defenseless against swarming Allied fighters, 
which blanketed the skies of Germany. Richard Vaught, not wanting to abandon his work in progress, even argued its viability as a ram fighter, an idea that would be quickly shelved. Nineteen pre-production prototypes were originally contracted with the Reich Ministry of Aviation, and a further 200 after the initial order had been filled. From this quota, a mere seven Blomenvoss BV-40 fighter gliders would see the light of day, with an additional 14 examples in various states of assembly, ahead of being destroyed by Allied bombing. Sadly, none would survive the Second World War. Before we wrap up, let's briefly cover specifications. The BV-40 had a maximum operational speed of 560 miles per hour, any faster and the pilot would risk structural failure. Continuing, a landing speed of 78 miles per hour and a takeoff speed estimated between 90 and 100 miles per hour. The glider accommodated a crew of one, had a gross weight of 2,100 pounds and an empty weight of 1,850 pounds. The BV-40 had a length of 18 feet, 8 inches, a height of 5 feet, 4 inches, and a overall wingspan of 25 feet, 11 inches. Lastly, armament. Two 30mm Rheinmetall Boisich MK-108 autocannons were forward-fixed at either wing route. Each weapon was allotted 35 rounds of ammunition to be used sparingly. In the end, the BV-40 is one of many doomed aircraft to emerge from the crumbling Third Reich in the war's closing years, a frantic bid to stall a foregone conclusion. I hope you've enjoyed today's short overview of the German Blomenvoss BV-40 fighter glider. We are a small channel, so a like is greatly appreciated, and recommendations are always welcome. Again, I am no expert, and never claim to be. Until next time, on Tipton Bros.